Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChitoCheckIt.com back with our second Photoshop CS6 beta tutorial. Earlier today, I went ahead and asked our fans on Facebook on whether or not they thought we should make a new intro now that we're into Photoshop CS6. And most of the people that we asked actually agreed that we should make a new intro. So Eli and I put our heads together and made the intro that you saw just a few seconds ago. So we thought it was pretty cool, uh, but we want to see what you guys think of it, uh, whether or not it's an improvement over the old one, and yeah, just give us your opinion on that. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into Photoshop. So what we're going over today is a new tool that was implemented into the Photoshop CS6 beta, and that tool is called the Content Aware Move Tool. And you can find that by going over to this little uh, band-aid looking icon over here, clicking and holding, and going to the fourth icon right here, which looks like two intertwining arrows, and it's the Content Aware Move Tool. So when you select that, you see that we've got a mode up here, and that mode can be set to either move or extend. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the move for the time being, and let's go ahead and hit the Enter key so that's not still selected. Alright, so in this particular picture, I decided that I want to go ahead and take Eli and his girlfriend who are walking on one of the beaches over in California, and I want to go ahead and move them off to another point in the picture. So maybe off to this left hand side over here looks pretty empty. But I can't just, you know, grab a lasso tool and move them over there because it'll be left with a huge blank space. So that's where the content aware move tool comes in handy. So let's start off by duplicating the background layer by hitting Ctrl J or Command J if you're on a Mac. And now with our Content Aware Move tool selected, we'll just go ahead and click and drag a very rough selection around Eli and Alex over here. So let's go ahead and get all that going on. Alright, so now that I've got that selection, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit with my scroll wheel. I probably should have done that a little bit earlier, but it makes no difference. So let's go ahead and try and move them off to the side over here. So we'll just click and drag and let's try and match this up with the horizon right there and let's let go and see what happens. So after just a few short seconds, the computer automatically filled in that gap where Eli and Alex were and it moved them all the way over here to this side where I dragged them to. And now if I deselect this by hitting Ctrl D or Command D if you're on a Mac, you'll notice that there is a little bit of a silhouette going on around Eli and Alex. But you know what? It's, it, I guess you can't really expect perfection out of this. So if you wanted to go ahead and fix that, what you could do is just add a little bit of a layer mask to it and take a brush and just kind of soften up the edges a little bit just to try and see if you can get rid of that edge. But obviously you would spend a lot more time on that rather than just kind of doing it pathetically like I'm doing right now. But just a little quick touch up around the edges helps it blend a lot more. And it actually, you know, in the end, it's a lot less work than just doing all this by hand. So it's actually a very useful tool and I can see why they wanted to implement something like this. It makes moving people from one place to another or objects or anything of the sort a lot easier to do. So let's go ahead and try the other part of this uh, little guy right here. And so let's go ahead and change the, uh, the mode up here to Extend. So now what the Extend tool does is it basically copies whatever it is you've got selected. So here's another picture, but this time it's me at some dinosaur park over in California. And in this particular picture, I decided that I like this rock. I want this rock in another spot on the picture. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Let's make a fairly rough uh, little selection around it. I'm not going to get two into this. Alright, so let's go ahead and call that good. Now let's go ahead and move this to another part. So I'll just click and drag this over here, maybe have another one on this side over here. And so when I click and drag that over there, it automatically tries to blend that with the surroundings around it. And since it's kind of the same as what it was over here, it doesn't really look all that, you know, impressive. I mean, sure, that's pretty easy to do. But what if I try to do something a little more, maybe a little more silly? Let's try and put this like out right on top of my head, something like that. It didn't really do that fantastic of a job per se, but it did kind of blend it a little bit. It kind of uh, feathered the mask a little and all that jazz. But that's why you uh, do something like that on a new layer. I didn't do that this time. I kind of forgot, but you know, if you were to do this on a new layer, you could go back through and use a layer mask to kind of blur out those edges. But something else that you can do, so let's go ahead and undo that and deselect. 
Something else that you can do is change this adaptation and uh, depending on the mode that you select, it actually kind of changes how it blends that edge, whether it's very strict or very loose. I'm still experimenting with that, figuring out exactly what that means. But from you know my few experiments, they do make a little bit of a difference. So let's just go ahead and try very strict and see what happens. Let's go ahead and make our rough selection around this guy right here. And almost done. There we go. So now let's go ahead and see if this works any better. So right there on top of my head. Okay, so maybe it's a little bit better around certain edges, maybe not so much on other edges, but there is a little bit of a difference there. But we'll deselect that, zoom out, and you know what, just at first glance, this is actually kind of convincing. You don't really notice those edges all too much. And you know what, it's kind of funny, so who gives a crap, right? I mean, it's just a really roughly done little sketch kind of a thing. So, I don't know, have a good laugh at it and call it good. <laughs> So yeah, this tool is actually pretty simple to understand. It's not exactly all that complicated. It's very easy to use and it has pretty good results. So I'm actually kind of glad that this was implemented into Photoshop because, well, obviously it just makes life easier when you're copying things to and from or if you're moving people on a beach or something of the sort. But yeah, so now you get the general idea of how the Content Aware Move Tool works. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this tutorial. If you liked this quick demonstration, please let us know by leaving a comment in the comment section below, or by liking this video, or by sharing it with others, or any combination of the three. And of course, let us know what you think of our new intro, and give us ideas on what we can do to improve it. And that's about all I have for today, guys, so I will go ahead and see you guys next Tuesday.